non-stop. That's the best way to describe SpaceX at Starbase. Even when there are no launches, the site remains a hub of activity, with steady progress across multiple systems, especially new ones featuring bold and innovative designs. So how is everything coming together? Let's dive into it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's true that many were disappointed by the delay of Flight 9 this month. However, it's important to remember that SpaceX's work at Starbase isn't just focused on one launch. It's aimed at building the future of space travel. And while we wait for the next flight, a tremendous amount of behind-the-scenes progress continues to unfold, especially with the development of Pad B and its associated systems. One of the most notable updates in recent days is the activity at Pad B. After months of anticipation, two massive flame buckets were delivered and installed in mid-April. These buckets now form the core of the new flame trench system, a key component for handling the intense thrust and heat generated during launches. With this foundation now in place, the focus has shifted to the orbital launch mount, which is still under construction at the Sanchez site. Between April 18th and the 22nd, four enormous legs for the OLM were transported to Starbase. Then, on the 23rd and 24th, these legs were erected at Pad B. Designed with a unique I-beam structure and holes at both ends, the legs are clearly engineered to bear immense loads. Their size and form hint at how they'll interlock with other components to provide a solid and durable base for the launch mount. This modular and replaceable approach demonstrates SpaceX's forward-thinking design strategy. With the legs now in place, it's likely that the OLM itself will be transported to Pad B soon for assembly and integration. All signs point to final stage preparations, and if progress continues at this pace, we may see the OLM fully installed by May. Also noteworthy is the arrival of hold-down arms, key components of the OLM at the Sanchez site on the 22nd. These arms, which secure the booster to the launch mount before ignition, are undergoing a major redesign. Early indications suggest that up to 20 of these arms may be installed per OLM, hinting at a more robust and efficient quick disconnect mechanism. This change could be critical for both safety and launch turnaround time. Meanwhile, Pad B's tank farm system is also steadily progressing. Back in February, a wave of water tanks arrived, followed by the recent installation of manifolds, including a Y-shaped pipe designed to channel water from the tanks to the flame trench. In the near future, we can expect additional infrastructure to support critical propellants like liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen, and methane. These upgrades are essential for preparing Pad B for live fire tests and future flights. Attention at Pad B also turns to the Chopsticks system, the massive arms used to lift and potentially catch Starship boosters. While ground-level construction continues, SpaceX has been actively testing the chopsticks to ensure readiness. If Flight 9 is successful, Flight 10 could be the first real attempt to catch a booster mid-air. That test will likely align with the completion of the OLM and full integration of Pad B. Beyond Pad B, other parts of Starbase are also seeing important developments. At the main launch site, chopstick testing continues. On the 22nd, the arms were raised to the top of the launch tower and then opened and closed in a controlled manner. These slow movements are designed to test the arm's flexibility and mechanical readiness, particularly in preparation for catch operations. The tests also served a secondary purpose, evaluating how the launch tower responds to stress. Observers noted visible shaking in both the arms and the tower itself, valuable feedback for SpaceX engineers as they consider further reinforcements or modifications. Finally, over at the production site, work on future Starship prototypes and supporting systems is also ramping up. New components are being built, assembled, and prepped for the next stages of testing and integration. While a single launch can capture headlines, it's this constant behind-the-scenes progress that truly drives SpaceX forward. So, even though Flight 9 is delayed, Starbase is anything but quiet. The path to the stars is still being paved. One weld, one flame bucket, and one launch tower at a time. Para -ra -ra. Progress on the Starship prototypes continues at full speed inside Starbase, as SpaceX prepares the next wave of vehicles for testing and flight. From booster and ship development to major infrastructure upgrades, the activity across Megabay 1, 2, and surrounding facilities shows just how rapidly things are moving forward. Starting with Megabay 1, B-14 is currently undergoing installation and post-static fire work. Recently, its upgraded hot staging ring was spotted, signaling a number of improvements aimed at refining stage separation. Once the remaining upgrades are complete, B-14 will receive its flight termination system before pairing with Ship-35 for future testing and launch. 
Right next to B-14 is B-15, which recently returned to Mega Bay 1 from the Rocket Garden. It is currently being inspected and prepared, with many speculating that it's being readied for Flight 11. Like B-14, key systems such as the Raptor engine installation, grid fins, and fuel tank preparation will be the focus of this phase. Also in Mega Bay 1, B-16 is believed to be receiving its engines after successfully completing cryogenic testing. Since it is expected to fly on Flight 10, the pace for this final integration is steady, but not rushed. Meanwhile, B-17, which completed its own cryogenic testing in early April, has now been relocated to the Rocket Garden. This likely opens up space in the bays for vehicles with more immediate launch windows, including the highly anticipated B-18, which many believe will be the first of the upgraded V-2 booster line. Next door in Mega Bay 2, ship development is also moving forward quickly. Ship 35 is now fully outfitted with its engines and systems and is ready to roll out to the Massey test facility for static fire testing. Prior to this, S-35 likely underwent additional checkouts following its successful cryogenic test. S-36, which has been fully stacked since March, also shows signs of nearing the test phase. Its PEZ dispenser system, a key mechanism for satellite deployment, has been installed for weeks, and its heat shield appears complete with recent imagery showing a distinct new cover design. A rollout for cryogenic testing seems imminent. Meanwhile, S-37 appears to have completed its assembly, as its final section arrived at Mega Bay 2 in early April. As of the 22nd, the vehicle was seen mid-installation of its heat shield using similar cover designs to those observed on S-36. Looking ahead, S-38 appears to be the next in line for stacking. On the 22nd, a new PEZ dispenser, likely part of S-38's payload bay, was delivered to Mega Bay 2. Key components including the nose cone have already been spotted inside the Star Factory, indicating assembly is imminent. More notably, Ship 39, believed to be the first Ship V3, is showing signs of major upgrades. Its liquid oxygen header tank and nose cone have been seen in the Star Factory, hinting at significant improvements in reusability and performance. S-39 may debut publicly in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, work continues in Mega Bays 1 and 2 as the original high bay nears full demolition. Half the structure remains and the nearby Stargate has already been removed. In its place, SpaceX will build Gigabay, a much larger facility designed to support the production and refurbishment of multiple starships and super heavy boosters simultaneously. This upgrade will boost efficiency and support faster turnaround times. A similar Gigabay is also planned for Cape Canaveral, underscoring SpaceX's commitment to scaling Starship operations. These infrastructure expansions reflect the company's long-term goal of enabling frequent interplanetary launches. With the rapid progress underway, SpaceX is setting its sights on several ambitious goals in the near future. Everything begins with Flight 9, which is expected to be the first launch featuring the upgraded Starship V2. This mission holds high stakes, especially following two consecutive test flights that encountered significant challenges. For Flight 9, SpaceX not only aims to demonstrate improved performance, but also hopes to achieve the first successful recovery of a Super Heavy Booster, a critical step toward full reusability. Preparations for this flight have been deliberate and methodical. While delays may be frustrating, they underscore the company's priority, ensuring success. This mission is more than just a single test. It sets the stage for what comes next. If Flight 9 meets its goals, the next major milestone will be Flight 10, which could mark the first attempt to catch the returning starship using the chopsticks system. Perfecting this technique will be a key focus for subsequent launches, as it is essential to achieving rapid and reliable reuse of both stages. Beyond recovery, SpaceX is preparing to tackle one of the most technically demanding objectives, in-orbit refueling. This capability... This capability is vital for deep space missions, especially NASA's Artemis III lunar landing currently scheduled for mid-2027. That mission will rely on infrastructure at SpaceX's Florida launch site, including a dedicated launch tower, orbital launch mount, and gigabay. These systems are already under construction and will play a crucial role in supporting crewed flights to the moon. Looking even further, Musk has outlined a vision for Mars exploration. The first uncrewed mission could take place as soon as 2026 with a human mission following between 2029 and 2031. In a surprising update, Musk recently shared a new goal, launching Tesla's Optimus robot to Mars by the end of 2025, adding yet another layer of ambition to the roadmap. To meet these ambitious objectives, SpaceX is targeting an extraordinary launch cadence, 400 missions over the next four years.
This translates to 100 launches per year, or roughly one every three days. Achieving such a rapid pace will require seamless integration of launch operations, high-volume production, and fully reusable spacecraft. In summary, SpaceX is entering one of the most pivotal phases in its history. The momentum at Starbase, driven by advanced manufacturing, infrastructure upgrades, and prototype readiness, shows a company preparing for the next era of spaceflight. While challenges remain, SpaceX has a proven track record of pushing boundaries and overcoming setbacks. With continued focus and innovation, they are steadily paving the way toward a future where space travel is faster, more affordable, and increasingly routine. Let's now shift focus to our final and one of SpaceX's upcoming missions, specifically the next Cargo Dragon resupply flight to the International Space Station. Designated CRS-32, this mission is scheduled to launch aboard a Falcon 9 rocket on April 21st at approximately 4.15 a.m. Eastern from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. The mission, a collaboration between SpaceX and NASA, will deliver several tons of essential supplies and scientific equipment to support ongoing operations aboard the ISS. According to NASA's mission brief, the Dragon spacecraft will carry more than just food and standard logistical cargo. It'll also deliver a number of innovative scientific payloads. Among them is a demonstration of improved maneuvering capabilities for the station's free-floating robotic assistance. Another key payload is an advanced air quality monitoring system, which could be critical in future long-duration missions to the Moon and Mars, where environmental control is vital. Additionally, Dragon will carry two atomic clocks designed to study the effects of space on timekeeping, contributing to research into relativity and the synchronization of ultra-precise time systems around the world. After spending more than a month docked at the ISS, Dragon will undock and return to Earth. Similar to Crew Dragon missions, its capsule is expected to splash down off the west coast to reduce any risk of debris generated by the trunk section during re-entry. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.